Hey guys, what is up? My name is Nicholas Yeo and I'm currently a core anaesthetic trainee in the Glasgow Royal Infirmary in Scotland. I've recently just completed my FRCA primary examinations and in this video today, I will be sharing with you some of my study tips on how I approach the OSCE examination. The FRCA primary OSCEs consist of 16 live stations and two rest stations. If you add the numbers up, with a reading time of one minute and a station time of five minutes, it takes approximately about two hours to complete the entire OSCE. Now each OSCE live station is marked to a maximum score of 20, and the passing score will be determined by your examiners using the modified Angoff marking system. Now the easiest way to understand this is that the passing score for each of the live OSCE stations will add up to the uh, total score or the total passing mark of the OSCE examination. And it's our job to actually score as much points in each OSCE station as we can to eventually meet the uh, passing mark for the entire OSCE examination. Now my first advice to you is to not underestimate the study material for the OSCE. I found the OSCE particularly difficult just because I've spent most of my time practicing for the Viva rather than the OSCE. It is actually really difficult in the recent sitting of the November exams, the passing score was 220 and the mean score for the candidates was 223. This means you need to score at least 14 out of 20 of each and every of the stations to actually pass. And on top of that, it is actually really mentally draining to do stations after stations for two hours straight as compared to a 30 minute Viva that you'll be doing during the examination day itself. Now there are lots of OSCE books out in the market, but the two which I so happen to use is the one by Chris Witten and the other one by Joanna Fox. Now I highly recommend two OSCE books and that basically helps you to cover a huge range of uh, topics. But if you don't really have the time, I would highly recommend the, uh, the one by Chris Ritten and that's because it helps to cover a huge range of topics and it also covers the stations by a topical manner and therefore it's easier to revise. I would also recommend some of the stations that are present in the Royal College Handbook as sometimes they do come out in the examinations. And to recap on physical examinations, I just went back to my essential examinations book, which I used in my medical school to prepare for OSCE examinations. Another supplementary book which I've used is the Anatomy for the FRCA book. I didn't read this from cover to cover. I mostly use it to uh, top up on my anatomy knowledge if I find there are certain topics that I need uh, further reading on. There is a lot of free online resources available. One, for example, is on the Royal College uh, website themselves. They have a series of uh, YouTube videos which shows you some of the uh, station variety and also what to expect on the uh, day itself, which I found really, really helpful. Another helpful resource is the uh, Quick Referencing Handbook, which you can find on the Association of Anesthetists website. I'll link all these uh, online resources in the, um, in the section down below and it helps you to give a structured way on um, attempting or answering uh, anesthetic emergencies. For preparation of resuscitation stations, there is an iResus app that you can actually uh, download on your mobile phone. I'll put the link down below and it basically gives you uh, the algorithm on managing anaphylaxis, tachycardia, bradycardia, basically just memorize those. And it would also be helpful if you do a quick read up on the summary of some of the most recent NEP guidelines, which can help you with uh, answering some of the uh, Viva and uh, OSCE questions. I'm just gonna quickly move on to some of the tips that I can give you for the history and communication stations. It's really, really important to have a structured approach in uh, doing an anesthetic history taking during your OSCE examinations. What I normally do is have a mental image of the anesthetic chart, which I use on a day-to-day -day basis in my mind so that I'll be able to ask its relevant categories and not miss anything out. In communication stations, it's really, really important to actually listen, sympathize, and also reassure Sure your patients. It's really good to practice speaking in layman terms, for example, explaining what succinamethonian apnea is to a patient and also uh, communication or history around awareness during general anesthesia. These are some of the uh, examples of stations that could come up. Other miscellaneous tips would include knowing how to describe a CT scan of the head, 
knowing your C-spine, X-ray, contour lines, knowing how to read a uh, PA or AP, and also a lateral uh, chest X-ray. In some of the resuscitations, it's really important that you need to know how to turn on a defibrillator and also to be able to safely deliver a shock. You need to know your pediatric doses and also lastly, don't be too afraid if you end your OSCE stations earlier than expected. Some stations take shorter, some stations take longer. And lastly, my most useful tip is to be able to source for any uh, local OSCE courses around your area because it's really, really hard to put together an OSCE circuit and it actually gives you a tremendous opportunity to familiarize yourself in an OSCE environment. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, if you like this video, if, if it helps you in any sort of way, please like and subscribe. If you need any questions or need something answered, leave it down in the comment section down below or give, drop me a message in Instagram. I'll be happy to help. If not, have a nice day ahead.